she's a girl in a million going to the office. But Carmel Gleason is proud to be able to go to work. She's one of nearly 100,000 people in Britain today who've been given a second chance. They are people who, from accident or disease, have lost legs or arms. Even 30 years ago, many of them could have looked forward to nothing more than the life of an invalid. There would certainly have been little chance of someone who'd lost both legs leading a normal life and doing an ordinary job. Today, Britain leads the world in providing, under its National Health Service, made-to-measure limbs for all disabled people who need them. It's an achievement in which science and humanity have combined to recreate happy and useful lives. Throughout the country, 28 limb-fitting centres issue and maintain artificial arms and legs, and when necessary, replace them. Here, at Britain's biggest factory of its kind, more than 10,000 artificial legs a year are made, and 50,000 come back each year for repair and refitting. Research goes on constantly to develop new limbs, which will move more and more naturally and be light and comfortable. Here at Roehampton Limb Fitting Centre is a Ministry of Health research unit, which deals entirely with artificial limbs. Here, tests are made to find out how much energy is used in wearing different kinds of legs. In this test, the man breathes into the bag on his back as he walks over a measured distance, timed by a stopwatch. The bag is afterwards connected to a gauge that records the amount of exertion that has been necessary. Much research, both at the Roehampton unit and at the manufacturers, went into the development of this below the knee leg. It has a different kind of fitting from earlier models and is made partly of plastic and partly of wood. As with all artificial limbs, the patient is carefully measured before the leg is made, and several fittings are given to be sure that it's quite right. The ankle moves almost naturally. This artificial arm and hand can do a great many things the real one can, including help its owner to become a darts champion. And Bob Daish, who lost an arm and an eye in World War II, can really put it through its paces. For 21 years, an artificial arm has given Bob a second chance in life. As well as wearing one, he's been making them at Britain's only artificial arm factory, which turns out 3,500 a year and services twice as many. When he's on the job, Bob exchanges his hand for some of the many appliances that have been designed for doing various jobs. These are for use at the engineering bench, but there are appliances available today for all kinds of work. Most people who've lost hands use one of these, mainly for off-duty wear. They're made of a special composition, carefully molded and shaped, and made to measure. When patients have been fitted with artificial arms, they take a course, usually for about two weeks, in the arm training school at the Limb Fitting Centre where they learn to use their new arms and hands and to get used to them. Learning to hold a knife and fork is one of the first things they're taught. The peg game is used to improve dexterity. Doing woodwork is not just a case of learning a new craft, but again, of helping the wearer to get used to his appliance. In a very few weeks, Carmel has progressed from the wheelchair to walking with sticks, and soon she'll be walking unaided. At the leg school, the newly disabled have three hours training a day for a fortnight or so. The training includes an obstacle course, each obstacle designed to improve leg and foot movements. 
Today, there are nine times as many people with artificial legs as arms, and about 50 patients come daily to Roehampton alone for leg training. Two artificial limbs are issued for each real one lost, so that one can always be kept in reserve. At the end of their course, most people are all set to take their place in normal life again. But the fact of being a long time away from work can produce all kinds of difficulties. Quite often, the employment exchange sends a disabled man or woman for two or three months to one of Britain's 17 industrial rehabilitation units set up by the Ministry of Labour. Every year, about 13,000 people with all kinds of disabilities from amputations to chronic bronchitis and polio go to the rehabilitation centres. They go there not specifically to learn a trade, but to restore confidence in themselves and in their ability to do a job that long illness may have undermined. While they're there, they're advised by experts on the kind of work for which they're best suited. Sometimes it's found that they have hidden abilities which can be developed by further training. And some go on to a government training centre for up to 12 months. The courses range from painting and decorating to plumbing and clerical work. They include watch and clock making and engineering. And even glass blowing. But because of the severity of their disablement or illness, some people can never take their place in open industry, though they're still capable of doing a good job. After an accident, Bill Strathern found a second chance as a bookbinder. He's one of more than 6,500 other disabled men and women who work for Remploy, the government-assisted factory group, which provides jobs for people who can't work under normal conditions. Today, there are 90 such factories, making a wide range of goods from furniture to knitwear, and about 5,000 people are on the waiting list for jobs in them. Here at Dagenham, Essex, books are rebound for libraries and schools by a staff of 50. All Remploy workers draw a special trade union rate for the job. In this factory at Holloway, London, electrical equipment for the home is assembled. Here, as in other employ factories, the sufferers from chronic ailments are employed as well as the physically disabled. Back at Roehampton, Carmel nears the end of her walking course, a triumph of her courage and the devotion of her teachers. She has already recaptured her self-confidence and is able to look forward to a future which once had seemed very bleak indeed. Now she's equipped to face the world again, to be one of the thousands going home from work each day with the knowledge that for her, life has begun again. <laughs>